NBC's Jacob Soboroff was in Haiti last week. He saw conditions there. Across Haiti's capital city, a landscape of despair. We're going to board a plane operated by the World Food Program. They're doing food and cash distributions. Can you tell me what life is like here? This is not a great place. Some areas are really like war zone. You don't go there anymore. It's a so war zone. It's really a war zone. Hey everybody, I'm Jacob Soboroff, correspondent for NBC News. Welcome to NBCU Academy. And today we're going to take you behind the scenes on our recent reporting trip to Haiti. And I'm lucky to be joined today by NBC senior producer Arnie Hakala, who was there with me on the trip, put the whole trip together. Arnie, thanks for doing this. You got it. Earlier this year, of course, we saw tens of thousands of Haitians make their way to the U.S. southern border, only to be uh, expelled, deported uh, back to Haiti. And I think that there was a big question about why they were there in the first place, why they left their home country and made, you know, one of the most dangerous journeys in the world to get to the southern border. Now to a state of emergency tonight in a Texas border town where more than 12,000 migrants, most from Haiti, are pouring across the border. I don't think a lot of people understand what the process itself is like to go from idea to reality to get on the ground in Haiti. So where do we start? That's right. I mean, I think um, there's a lot that goes on days and weeks prior to a trip like this. And I think um, number one concern, obviously, with Haiti was security, um, security for our team um, on the ground. And so we had to do a security assessment of the situation on the ground in Haiti. And, and as we all know, it's, it's, um, it's pretty dire and pretty extreme. We uh, proposed a rough itinerary of what we wanted to do, what we wanted to see, who we wanted to talk to. And they would just tell us what's feasible and what's not. Kidnappings was a real concern for us as we went about you know, our reporting. Was that something that came up in the conversations in the security assessment? Yeah, that was flagged very early by, um, by the NBC security team. Um, it's, it's a constant danger in Port-au-Prince. Um, the, the capital is essentially controlled by, by the gangs. And so um, given the security situation, given the, the number of gangs in Port-au-Prince, um, we had to come to a determination of how many security personnel we would have on our team how many vehicles we would travel in. And those kind of details were really worked down, I mean, down to the most minute levels. Because you're the senior producer for our group, you know, you're basically planning an entire trip when we come up with the idea. What are three major things that, that you're always keeping in mind when planning the logistics, but also, you know, the elements, the editorial uh, of a reporting trip like this? Number one, I think for us was accommodations. The hotel became, as you're well aware, our bureau in Haiti our workspace, it was where we did live shots from, it was where we sat down to, to write and script. Um, it really became our central hub. Number two was transmission. Um, we had two methods to transmit from Haiti. Uh, one was using a live view and one was using a BGAN. Both essentially allow us to broadcast from there, um, whether it's from cell service or from satellite. Number three, clear communication and flexibility. We kind of take for granted, you know, cell service and being able to have access to the comms all the time. You know, in a place like Haiti where it's so spotty, it takes a lot of planning ahead. You really have to let people know, kind of map out the schedule for the day so everybody's on the same page about where you're going to be. One example of having to roll with the punches was just arriving in Haiti. When we landed, we landed uh, at the, about the same time as a deportation flight. Just maybe like less than an hour uh, until one arrived, yeah. Right, so we knew we were going to have to hit the ground running. And so thankfully, JB, our, our cameraman, had done um, his homework and had found the best location at the airport for trying to get a signal out. Hey, guys, can you hear me? All of us were sweating. We were just uh, a couple minutes from air, and we weren't sure if it was going to get out or not. But thankfully, um, Rob was doing his thing on top of the van to, to get a signal, and uh, we were able to get out. Let's turn now to a developing story in Haiti. Our own Jacob Soboroff just made it to the airport, joins me now. So, Jacob, what? and is greeting these folks that haven't been in this country for nearly a decade. A confusion and frustration, Chuck. It actually, behind me I right think now, it can't be um, overstated how important right that moment was here, because that was when live on the air we were able to talk to a family who had just been deported, just been expelled, landed on the ground, and they walked out of the gates of the airport. We want to live somewhere we can have a better life. And, and you see that there's a desperation on, in people's attitude and in their, on their faces about landing in a country they haven't been in many of them for as long as a decade and there's a fear or a, a worry about what life is going to be like from that moment forward and so even before we left the gates you realize this is a profound moment for these hundreds of families getting off the plane and then the minute you leave the airport you see that life in haiti 
is very difficult. Yeah, I mean, those are the moments that, you know, we travel for, that we do these stories to, to try to get. I mean, so to be able to capture that moment, you know, live and organically like that, um, you know, it's a testament to the team we were working with and the technology that we have at our hands nowadays. Come with me, I want to show you something. You know, at the end of the day, we're storytellers. We're there as the sort of vessel through which the people we meet and the experiences that we have are going to be communicated. A lot of people see people at the border and don't know the reason that they're standing there right. until like something like this. That's, That's right. Really this is where they're coming from and this yeah. is why they're coming. You're kind of seeing the story through our eyes when we're down there. We're like you said, the vessels for people to tell um, their stories of how they're living and, and their lives. And so it's a responsibility, but it's one that we take very seriously. And I think the more flexibility you can have when you're on the ground in a situation like this, the better. Arnie, thank you seriously for taking the time to do this. I know you're normally behind the camera. Thanks. Thank you. Hope we do it again.